My name is Zoe McDonald and I am a mushroom dyer. I am also an ecologist. How did I get into mushroom dyeing? That's a good question. I was dyeing for about 15 years, mostly just with plants. And then one day I got an email from a Coast Salish weaver named Deborah Sparrow, and she wanted to know if I would dye with her on a project uh, for a Coast Salish blanket. At that moment when she asked me to be involved, I realized even though my job was in the forest so much, I knew almost nothing about how to get color from it. And I realized that was something I really wanted to change. I really wanted to have a look at what is out there, what can be sort of ethically harvested from the forest um, and used for small projects to make different kinds of color. And I was amazed at the rainbow of possibilities out there. So mushroom season runs about August to the beginning of December. And so the first thing you want to do is go out and find mushrooms. My name is Paul Kruger. I'm a founding member of the Vancouver Mycological Society. I do various types of research projects to do with mushroom biodiversity, ecosystem function and forest habitats. It's very important that people approach mushrooms out of interest and learn about them before they start picking to eat them. And um, it's very advisable to get a good mushroom book or two, spend some time with people that know mushrooms, and don't eat anything unless you really know what it is for sure. So we have lots of different kinds of dye mushrooms in our forests around Vancouver. This is one you'll see quite often. It's called Dyer's Polypore or Feuchwinitzii. Um, you can get about 30 different shades and colors from it. It's a great, very concentrated uh, mushroom for dyeing. So it's not just mushrooms you can use. You can also, there's lots of plants you can use to dye and also lichens. This is our Xanthoria. This is the one that's gonna give us a bright pink and a blue. Um, when you're harvesting lichens, you want to make sure that it's something that's fallen off naturally and is on the ground. Uh, we don't want to take them from live trees. And so once you've identified your mushrooms, um, you harvest them um, and then you bring them home and then you, what I do is I chop them up and I dry them. Um, and then when I have enough for a project, I will move ahead with that dyeing process. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to put mushrooms into the pot. You're going to heat them up um, and you're going to try and kind of get all of those good dye pigments and all molecules into your water. So you chop up your pieces really finely, you heat them for at least an hour. Um, and then when, not, when all of that's done, you're going to filter those pieces out and the liquid that you've got is called your dye vat and your dye vat is what's gonna, you're gonna put your fiber in and that's what's gonna give you your color. So that's, um, that's kind of the last process. It's the most exciting part, which is when you really actually pull those colors out of those mushrooms and into your fiber. First step I would encourage anybody to take is to join a local mushroom club. So in Vancouver, it's the Vancouver Mycological Society. But there's lots of other ones in your town or your cities, wherever you're from. Um, that you can join that will help you with identification and where to get mushrooms and how to harvest. Um, and we also want to be careful, there are some mushrooms out there that can hurt us, so we really want to be careful with what we're collecting and also at home with kids, how it's stored. You want to make sure that it's stored in a safe way so that kids can't get into it. I think as a Western society in general, we're quite fungi-phobic. You know, we're, we're willing to take our kids out just like my parents took, took us out. Uh, but it was always don't touch the mushrooms, which is a good which is a good rule with kids not to touch the mushrooms. Yet, you know, in British Columbia to date, we have 3,500 species, and that number is going to double pretty soon. I have a friend who once said, "Not all our teachers are meant to be humans," and it's true. We're meant to go out into the forest. There's things there that no one can teach us, and I would encourage anybody to put on some shoes and head out the door. You know, you never know what you're gonna find, but there's a lot there to learn.